Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ella and in today's video I'm going to be answering the age old question, what is wrong with my eye? So in short, I'm blind in my right eye. I was born with something called microphthalmia and PHPV and PHPV stands for Persistent Hyperplastic Primary Vitreous? Vitreous? Which basically means I was born with a cataract that didn't ever go away. I guess if you don't know about eyes then all babies have a film over their eyes to protect them when they're in the womb and it disperses and goes away. Mine didn't and it became a cataract but not like a normal cataract where it's like a film. It's now, because I'm nearly 20, it will be a hard substance kind of thing. Um, Microphthalmia means small eye. So basically my eye just didn't develop as it should have when my mum was pregnant with me and I was born with no vision in my right eye. Um, I say no vision. I cannot see anything out of it, but I have light perception, but no shadow perception. So if someone was to shine a light and I had something dense covering my left eye, I would be able to point in the direction where the light was coming from. Um, if I'm in like a room that's got lots of glass windows in in the summer, it kind of feels like the light is coming through the side of my head. Like from about like where my temple is it feels like it's coming in through there so I can sometimes see it like that and it's red I think it's red like I don't know if it's just how my brain is seeing it or if it is actually red or well, that's how my mind is creating it to be um yeah I've had both these conditions since birth um I get this question a lot do I have depth perception? I don't know. I don't think so. Because I have been like this my whole life. I don't know what depth perception is. Um, I'm very bad at catching things. Uh, sometimes like throwing things I can't throw to where I think it's going to go. Um, if something is thrown at me, I have to guess where it's going to go. So I'm very flinchy around things like that. I was awful at dodgeball and stuff like that in high school. Uh, white ping pong balls. I don't see. I don't know if it's because they're like, so small or something. I can't see where they're going and where they're gonna go. So th this is my idea of depth perception. If someone is throwing something at me, it just, I don't see it coming, travelling through the area. I see it where it is and then it gets bigger as it obviously gets closer to me. And it just comes to me. I don't know. Um, another question is when did they find out? I had microphthalmia. Uh, ooh, I have a letter from the 17th of the 10th, 2000, and it says here that I had, that they knew I had microphthalmia. Um, this was from Adam Brooks Hospital in Cambridge, which is a big, well known hospital in the UK. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure how long after I was born. I was born in the April of 99 and that was from the 10th, uh, from the 17th of the 10th, 2000, so. The vision that I do have in my left eye is nearly perfect. It's not exactly perfect. And for anyone else that had the same prescription level that I do, they might not wear their glasses as much as I do. I wear them a lot when I'm driving. That's another question. Can I drive? Yes, I can drive. Um, I passed everything 
nine months to the day after my 17th birthday. Um, I can drive, I don't have to have any special adaptions or anything on my licence. Um, though I do have an extra little wing mirror bit that goes on top of my wing mirror on my right. Because I can't see my blind spot on my right, which is ironic. Because the entirety of my left side is my blind spot. But, you know. Um, yes, yeah, tangent. I do wear my glasses more than most people with my prescription would. Because, and my opticians explain this to me, one eye cannot do the job of two eyes, even if it's done it since you've been able to see. So, my left eye is basically trying to act like both of my eyes should do. So, I get a lot more floaters, which are the little lines that you see when you look at the light, than most people would because all of that light is being absorbed by my left eye rather than my right and left eye, if that makes sense. So I wear my glasses to stop, like, strain, I guess, and I don't want to, like, cause my eyes any further injury, or my eye any further injury. Another thing, um, I did do have a squint in my right eye. I'm not too sure what a squint means. Yeah, so it literally just says here a permanent ooh, a permanent deviation in the direction of the gaze of one eye. Uh, um, eyes that don't look in the same direction. Yeah, so I did have a squint and I had surgery to correct it in 2004. Um, my squint went inwards so it basically my right eye looked at like the tip of my nose um, and they had I had surgery um, I don't think I want to look out what that actually entails because and I'll do a whole other video about that um, yeah I don't know if I want to look up what they do because it is it, I I'm not sure I think I think I want to say it was like three hours, it might be longer. I will ask my parents and I'll put up how long that was. Um, yeah, they do a very invasive surgery to do something with the muscles. They shorten one of the muscles, I think. Well, they did with mine. So I'm assuming that they shortened the outside muscle. Um, and I don't really want to know how they did that. Uh, yeah, because I'm at the mo. I will in my surgery video. I will also explain why I am considering another surgery, not for any like health reasons. Not because there's anything wrong with my eye at the moment, because there isn't. Um, yeah, but I don't want to look that up because I'll admit that is the most scariest day of my life, and I'm 20 in April, and that was in 2004. Uh, yeah, so, um, uh, I guess that's kind of all the medical kind of side of what is wrong with my eye. Um, oh yeah, the reason that I might still have a squint is because when, it used to be only when I'm tired. Um, but now it's kind of all the time. My eye rolls into the back of my head and it literally can sometimes be like, you can't see any of the blue anymore. Oh, my eye isn't blue. My left eye is blue, my right eye is grey. It's grey because of the uh, microphthalmia, but the pupil is also grey because of the cataract. So the black bit in this bit is grey and then there's a black line around the outside and then the blue bit on this eye is grey on this eye because of the microphthalmia. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so the eye just sometimes rolls into the back of my head. So I'm assuming that's a upward squint rather than an inward squint. I don't know. I'm not a medical professional. Just 19 years of experience. Um, yeah, because my eye is smaller, I used to wear something called prosthetic shell. And I'll insert a clip here, if I can find them. 
of my shelves. Um, yeah, so basically, as you can see, they are thick. Some of them are very thick. Uh, contact lenses, basically, that has a mirror image of my left eye painted onto it. Uh, all by hand and everything by person on my... So it's like mirrored so it would be on my right eye. And I wear the shell and basically your face, I think grows your orbital bone which is like the sockets around here grow because your eyes grow as you get older and you get bigger so your eyes growing irritates around this bit and your brow bone and it then makes your eyes your face grow evenly people that don't have the same size eyes as I do um, have to wear a shell to so it's then at the same thickness your eyes are at the same thickness uh, to then make your face grow evenly however I well when I was born I was the most I was the least severe case of microphthalmia that they had ever seen um, at Moorfields Eye Hospital. I can't believe I didn't mention that. Yeah, Moorfields Eye Hospital in London is where I went from when I was born to when I was 17. Uh, and then I was discharged from there and I had my surgery at Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital, also in London, by or consulting with Dr. Nicola Rag, who is like research in does is like leading researchist, I think that's how you say it, in my condition and other conditions similar to it. Um Yeah. They Ooh, gone off on the tangent. Let's backtrack that. Um Yeah, so if your eyes aren't the same size, naturally you wear a shell to make them the same size and then it irritates the bone and your face grows symmetrically. I was the least severe case at 13 and I was a stubborn child and hated wearing my shell. But I don't know why because the only, it's not painful, it's just uncomfortable, the only uncomfortable part is the putting it in and taking it out and if you get something underneath it if you get something underneath it you just take it out get it out put it back in it's fine they told me when i was younger until i was about seven that i didn't have to wear it no that i did have to wear it so i did and i wore it and i was fine and then they're like oh you don't have to wear one anymore you don't have to wear one if you don't want to. And I'm like, great, don't want to wear it. So I stopped wearing it. And then still had to go back because I had to go for my checkups and stuff. And I went and they're like, why aren't you wearing a shell? Your face is becoming lopsided. I hadn't noticed that. Um, and then they're like, yeah, you need to wear a shell. Again, from when I was 12 until I was 17 because your face stops growing in females when they're 17. So I don't know what it is for males. I know it's later I think it's like 1920 I don't know um so I was like great I don't want to wear it I hate it so I had to wear it anyway because I then started noticing that my face was lopsided you can't really see but my eyebrows aren't even I'm gonna go get my glasses so you can see so yeah Ooh, glare great um, you can see that, you can see my eyebrow in this one, but not on this one. So, and then my uh, cheekbone is higher up here to here. But my ears and everything are still even because it's just the orbital or eye socket bone that is affected by um, your eye growth.
I was like, yeah, fine, okay. I don't want to wear it, but I don't want to become more lopsided because then it will become obvious to other people. Whereas to me, I only notice it because I see it every day and my parents notice it when I wear my glasses and stuff like that because then you can see the difference. And I now try and get glasses that either cover both my eyebrows or only show both of them because then it's like less obvious. Um, yeah, I started wearing them again. Um, but then I found that I didn't like how it looked because to me, sometimes I don't like how I look but it's how I look and I can't change that. And then when I had eyes that looked the same, I didn't like it again because I looked like someone completely different because your eyes are so obvious. And it's like the focal point of your face that everyone notices it. And I noticed it and I didn't like it and everyone would say that I looked different. And then people would start complimenting me when I had my shell in and they're like oh you look really nice today and I'm like no I don't like it because you are complimenting me because I look normal and I don't like that um so I had a clear one made that I thought I could just wear because it would keep my face growing at the same speed but I would still look like me however I do also wish that I had got one made that was as thin as I could get it made that had my eye painted on it because it was uncomfortable and you have to get used to it like you have to get used to wearing contact lenses and stuff like that um I think if I'd gotten used to it then it wouldn't have been as uncomfortable and then I would have been fine with it and then I'd have got used to looking how I did with the shell but because I didn't do it, I now don't have that. And now that I'm older, I mean, this was all like four or five years ago that I started getting like, oh, I don't like it because I look different and people like that I look better or I look normal with my shell in. And then it became like a whole big thing. But now that I'm older, I kind of, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that I wanna, look, see how normal I do look, if that makes sense. So I have, well, myself and my family have been part of a charity called Max, M-A-C-S, since I was 13 or 14 months old, I think. Yeah, I don't think I went to one before I was one. And every year they have an annual general meeting which takes part over a weekend and you go and you have meals in the evenings and there's a like a meeting for everyone to go for the adults to go to and then they have like a social aspect to it so children can meet other children that look like them that have the same conditions as them because a amount well a proportion of children that have max conditions which are microphthalmia, anophthalmia and coloboma. One of the other two means no eyes and the other one means cat shaped eyes. I think. Well that's just how I remember it. I don't know what the actual like term is. Whereas mine means small eye. Micro, obviously. Um, yeah, we would, uh, yeah, a select por uh, portion of those children have other ailments and conditions that can affect their mentality and their mental capacity. So I think it's like a good way for children like that to meet other children and parents especially, like even where, I don't think I've been to one since I've done my GCSEs, but children who are very young their parents would come up to me and my parents and talk to us because 
it's so uncertain because like if you googled my condition it will show you the worst case scenario and it will tell you all these things that are so bad because that's the extreme and that's the same with any condition they will show you the extremes but if you put those extremes next to someone like me it's completely different like there there is and it's not necessarily a wrong thing that they have shown you that because that could be what happens but it to me it does seem very terrifying that a mother that's just given birth to a child that she didn't know wasn't going to be perfect is then said, oh, I'm sorry, but your child has this. And then you're like, oh, okay, we'll take it as it comes, stuff like that. And then you go home and you Google it and it's the most appalling thing you can imagine. Like you can't imagine how your child's life is gonna be. But then seeing people that have children that were told the exact same things that might be a couple of years older than you or even 10 years older than you than your child like myself like I was it's reassuring and it kind of gives that that comfort that I think a lot of people in that situation need and even for like children like I asked for questions I put a post in that group chat asked questions and I said I'm a 20 year old university student in Cambridge and one of the women asked how have you found university like how is it like her daughter is 16 and thinking about university and my answer to that is it is the most supported level of education you will ever have because you pay so damn much for it you do get what you pay for but it is the most level of support that you will ever have however drunk people are annoying and that is the place where you will find the most drunk people is universities <laughs> and it's normally uh, you go to the bathroom in a nightclub and you're washing your hands and some drunk girls ask you a question uh, can sometimes be very point blank and I'm sure that on a Tuesday morning they wouldn't be acting like that and all you have to do is just tell them point blank no like try not to get offended I know it's hard but after 16 or 18 years when you go to university you'll have heard everything under the sun and nothing can really phase you anymore but you kind of have to take it Take it with a pinch of salt. They're drunk. They're not probably not going to remember you tomorrow morning. And that's fine. Because if they did and they were still annoying about it or still mean about it, you don't want to know them anyway. Um, when I moved into halls, we had a pizza night on the first night. And I did tell them, the people that I, were living, I was living with, I'm like, Hi, I'm Ella. I'm blind. You don't need to tiptoe around me, but if anyone like in the street asks you, or like not in the street, but like anyone that comes around asks you and like what's wrong with her face or whatever, then just be like, it's my flatmate, leave her alone, she's blind. Like, people are normally really kind about it, it doesn't really matter. They're people are what they are and we are what we are, so yeah, teachers are going to be fine about it because, again, we pay so damn much, they have to be. <laughs> and uh, I even went to my university in the summer before I started and spoke to a support person or whatever it was about my classes and stuff like that. And an email was sent out to all of my lecturers just like telling them about things and if I was not going to be at lessons, it was because I have appointments and stuff like that and it was all, it was all fine, nobody really bad an eyelid, it was fine. So I also asked for 
questions from my Instagram. Can you drive? Yes, again, as I said, I can drive. I got my driver's license seven months, uh, and nine months exactly after I turned 17. What are you classed as under the government law? Oh, so I'm assuming this is talking about the grey area between um, am I legally blind or am I legally visually impaired? I'm neither. Um, I, according to the law, I'm not blind and I'm not visually impaired. Uh, legally blind means that you have to have such poor vision that uh, without correction, to a certain extent, which, because I have nearly perfect vision in my left eye, I'm not classed as blind, and visually impaired, you have to have a degree of, obviously, visual impairment that is less than a normal person's and, no, which is more impaired than a normal person's but less than someone that is legally blind. So, because I'm blind in my right eye but I have nearly perfect vision in my left, I'm not considered anything. So, I'm partially blind. Visually impaired and partially sighted are the same, but just different terms. So I'm partially blind. Do you have a guide slash service dog? No, I don't, because I have good enough vision that I don't need one. Um, I'm assuming service dog would be for, uh, for my, I don't know, if, because this is also on my other, about my other illnesses and stuff like that. Um, that if it was for that, but some people do have service dogs for visual impairment um, that aren't guide, guide dogs because they are like for balance and obviously like special awareness and stuff like that. Um, there is a difference between service dog and guide dog. I will link below Molly Burke, who is a blind YouTuber. She has a guide dog called Gallop and Mary Fry from The Fry Life, she has a service dog called Oliver and you can kind of see the difference between the two. Did you have any vision support in your education? Um, no, I didn't have any visual support. Um, I did use a coloured overlay in years 10 and 11 because my dyslexia was pretty pretty new to me then and we thought that using an overlay would help. I didn't really find, I don't really find that my eye affects me in any other way other than I have no depth perception. I sometimes have poor spatial awareness, especially when I'm ill, like if I have a cold or something, I don't know what it is, but I find that my depth perception and spatial awareness just goes in the toilet. Um, I walk into doors a lot, like door frames, um, especially when I have a cold again because it maybe it's to do like obviously I have a larger sinus cavity on this side because your eye obviously then also irritates your sinuses and it grows in relation to your skull and your skeletal structure. I think that because mine's different, it then creates a bigger cavity for my sinus to fill. So when I get like colds and stuff, it then fills up more and it's gross. I don't know. Maybe. I hope that's answered all your questions. If you have any more, leave them in the comments below or follow me and DM me on my social media. They are all chronically underscore Ella underscore and they'll be left in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all of that jazz, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!